Shalom Aleichem. You've probably heard of Dan's Deals, famous website, human being behind it. Actually, he lives in Cleveland, Ohio, my hometown, where we're moving to, moving back to, over the summer, God willing. And he saves people money, time, and energy. He might be from Shevet Adan. His name is Dan, Daniel. And this week I heard something beautiful from the Rebbe. Rebbe spoke in 1959, Tafshin Yud Tess, about this week's Torah portion by Halotcha. Halotcha means to, to raise up, to elevate, as you've heard in the previous running commentaries, of course. And this time we're going to talk about Dan. What was Dan's deal? What was Dan's original deal? So here it goes, something like this. The Talmud tells of a certain man who was talking, the Talmud is talking about why it's important and how it's important to have precision in the language we use wherever and whenever. And it talks about a certain person who would always say whenever there was a, compli- a conflict arose, it was in Tractate Pesachim, page four, he would say, Dunu Dini. Dunu Dini means educate me, adjudicate me, judge me, tell me what's going on, tell me where I'm going right and wrong. He would ask the people around him to judge him carefully. So the Talmud comments on this person that he was certainly from the tribe of Dun. From the tribe of Dun. In our Torah portion, it talks about the 12 tribes and how they traveled in the desert and how they camped around the Mishkan when they camped. And the tribe of Dun was, had very, was very uh, populated. It had one of the most uh, amounts of people. And they would be called the Ma'asef, the Chol HaMachanot. They would be behind all the other tribes. And we'll talk about that soon. But first, the Rebbe, in his characteristic way, the Hasidic teachings, he takes this little piece from the Gemara, where from the Talmud, the story where this man says, Dunu Dini, judge me. But introspect. And he says, we need to learn from this man who was introspective about himself. And a person needs to be introspective about themselves. He would say, he wouldn't say, okay, whatever happens, happens, whatever I do, I do whatever comes and goes, fine. He would say, let me look into the Torah, which is our guide for life, and see what is the right thing to do. And that's what Dunu Dini is. So the first lesson the Rebbe quickly said was, let us all say Dunu Dini. Dunu means you. Please help me judge my case. Tell me what I'm doing is right or wrong. And But it's really talking about self-introspection. It's not talking about judging another emphatically, as we'll see later, hopefully, if I remember. So now, what was done biblically? Let's go back to that story. Biblically, they were one of the tribes, Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Hood, Sachar, Zavolim, Dun, and Naphtali, God, Asher, Yosef, and Benjamin. So Dun was the one who was known to be Me'asif, the Kol HaMachanot. He, would, he was the collector of all the lost items from all the tribes. So they would travel in the back, in the hind, in the rear, and when somebody would drop something or lose something from all the... There were three million strong. Approximately three million people were traveling in, in the desert at the time, and people would drop things. Dun would collect them and return them. Says the Rebbe. So this idea, the Dun, is the Ma'asef Machanot. He returns lost items to people from all the camps. It's really not just a historical event. It's a virtual responsibility, a lesson for us today. And that we are all, we are all Duns, and we all have to return these lost items. Now what is this? What does it mean, virtually, this lost item? Says the Rebbe, that every person, every human being, was given a certain number of hours, days, and years on this planet with a certain ability, with a certain amount of talent and capability 
and ability and energy. And we're meant, God created this world with a mission for us to use the time and energy that we have and use it productively to make this world a holy place, to bring this place, bring this world closer to God. Says the Rebbe, a lost item. What does it mean that when somebody loses an item virtually, it means when somebody wastes their time and talent and doesn't use it productively for what God wants. That's the lost item. The lost item is really lost time and lost energy and talent that was channeled in the wrong direction. Says the Rebbe, we all have to be aware of what is the job, what is the job of the tribe of Dun. Dun were, were the collectors of the lost items and talent. I lost items and they brought them back to the people. So virtually, Dunn's job, which is our own job, is for us to become more aware that we have these missing items or missing talent or missing energy, the energy that's channeled in the wrong direction, and we're supposed to rechannel it to the right way. That's Dunn's deal. That's the original Dunn, Dan's deal. And the river says it goes further and it goes deeper that it's not just for themselves. Dunn, the tribe of Dunn, didn't just find their own things and return it, but they found and returned all the items, the lost items of all the other people. By the way, parenthetically, I just realized while I was thinking about this, that the word item shares the same letters as the words time. Item, time, I-T-E-I-M, I-T-E-E-M, I-T-E-M, T-I-M-E, item time. So it's similar in that sense too. That will be in the world of Remez. Anyway, moving on. The Rebbe says that they also took care of everyone else's items, lost articles. And who's, who else was there? There was all the tribes. The, from, the, from the highest to the lowest of all the calibers of the Jews that were there. The Rebbe says there were people who were in the tribe of Kahas. In the, from, the, from the ancestry of Kahas, that in the camp of Kahas, that they were carrying the items of the Mishkan, of the temple, that were very, very holy, until the Ark itself. So there were people who were carrying the Ark, and the tribe of Dun, who were not such a higher, superior quality, spiritual people, they were the ones who brought back their lost articles, which really means they made them aware that they're not channeling their energy in the right place. That's what the Rebbe says, a fascinating thing. He says it could be somebody whose life is Torah. Their whole world is the Torah. They're holding the Ark. They're carrying the Torah. They're studying Torah their whole lives. But still, they're channeling their energy in the wrong way, and they need someone from Dun to be able to uplift them and remind them and make them aware of, their, of the right perspective. Now, why was Dun the one who was able to elevate even the superior Jews or those who were already elevated because they had Ava Israel, because they had the love for the fellow Jew and they dedicated themselves to helping others. Says the Rebbe, there's a value in helping others. You can only really truly know that you're on the right path if you're permeated with the love of a fellow Jew, love of helping others and your dedication to help others. And in 19... 59. The Rebbe was talking about this, trying to encourage the Hasidim who lived nearby in Crown Heights, where he lived, to get out, get out of town, and move somewhere else where they are needed to sacrifice their own comforts of a vibrant Jewish community. But being near the Rebbe, what greater pleasure, spiritual pleasure was that? to sacrifice all that and go out and find some hick town where there are Jews who can benefit from their presence there, from their Torah study, from establishing kosher institutions, organizations and institutions. So that's what the Rebbe was saying. The Rebbe was saying that it really takes somebody who sacrifices themselves to go out, like Dan, who was not close to the Aron Kodesh, to the Mishkan, to the Holy Ark. Dan were at the outskirts. They were all the way in the back. They were the, the last tribe in the, care, in the travels. 
but they were the ones who were able to elevate and return the lost items, the lost articles, figuratively meaning return the awareness, the proper awareness of where we should channel our time and our energy. Just like Dan's deals. Dan's deals, in my understanding, is somebody, Dan is somebody who dedicated his life, at least this part of his life, in helping others maximize their time and their energy and their finances. But with him doing all the legwork and all the research on the back, all the, the backstory of what is needed so that other people can benefit from it and use their time wisely and even better serve Hashem with more time and give more tzedakah. And that's what the Rebbe said, we, we do this like the tribe of Dan, and we're supposed to reach out to every other Jew who we know can benefit from our help without judging others. So Dan was, the word Dan comes from the word judgment. Dan, Ladun, means to judge. A Dayan is a judge. So the Rebbe says, it is important to be introspective and to judge ourselves introspectively, but when it comes to another, you always judge another favorably. You don't judge another. Let God do the judging. We just help wherever we can. I think that's it for today. God bless you guys. And remember there's a song, a friend of mine, Mati Pushemesh. Never judge another till you walk in his place. It's from the Pirkei Avot. God bless you. And we'll be in touch. Shabbat shalom. The heat are out.